Jojo, what's the plan for today? Defending leg entanglements from top positions. Why did he have to bring Craig into this country? Fuck! Fuck! Fucking do it, bitch. He wanted a cop. Somehow he decided he liked Santa Fe. Joseph Chen and Craig Jones were in town for the ADCC Asia trial. I shot a cool video with them and also filmed a pretty epic seminar at our gym. You can thank Craig and Joseph for this by buying their instructionals and buying their merch. Check out our gym, Singapore Submission Grappling, and you can support making my videos on Patreon. Links to everything are in the description below. Now enjoy this epic seminar. We'll be going over today how we can start looking to address and counter leg entanglements from the top position. So um, recently I'm sure you guys have seen that like ankle locks and outside heel hooks and butterfly ashi has become more prevalent. And so we'll go over these positions and how we can start looking to mitigate their attacks as well as go into our own attacks. So we'll start in a situation where our opponent has a single leg X on us. And so conventionally what's taught here a lot of the time is that you want to strip this foot off of your hip. And from here, a lot of times you can start looking for back steps. However, a lot of the times this is like the default reaction. So it can be easy for my partner to anticipate. And if I look for back steps and I don't necessarily do this well, it's easy for him to start looking to go into counters, et cetera, et cetera. So something we can use in conjunction, not as an alternative, but using together, especially based on the reactions when they're really looking to like time me stepping back, is instead when I strip his foot off of my hip, right, I take it off. In this case, instead of stepping back, I'm gonna step front. So my outside leg is gonna step towards his, his head and I'm gonna start looking to pivot the leg that's entangled. It's important when I do this, if I were to just step forward, the likelihood is he's gonna start looking to block my shin, and from here he can off balance me and put my hands to the mat. So, in this situation, what we wanna do is, as we look to strip this off of the hip, a lot of the times he's gonna to try to grab our secondary leg, we're gonna grab his wrist, and I wanna push it down to the mat. I'm not just gonna grab palm up, I wanna to look to push his hand either to the mat or into his hip. I wanna make sure that the connection between my fingers and my thumb is covered by either his own body or the mat. So now when he looks to strip the grip, it's gonna be more difficult. And once we get here, I'm monitoring both feet. In this case, with the foot, I'm not trying to hold his foot as much as I am just trying to block it. Because if I try to grip it, from here he kicks out, it's easy for him to start looking to pummel his leg out. So I'm just like trying to loosely follow him. So now when he looks to pummel this foot, it becomes easier for me to keep track of him. And from here, now because I'm controlling his wrist, this gives me an ability to freely front step. Usually I'll take this in one, two steps or I can now start looking to attack in a manner that is kind of similar to this K-guard style counter, where it's very similar to a position where he could have his foot on my hip. But instead, we're already at a good angle and his feet are away from his body. So from here, it's very easy for us to start looking to grab a hold of his feet and start looking to pummel elbows in, possibly start looking to bring knees away from chest and start looking to move towards a pass. So we'll slowly build on this. Um, as we go through the class where we'll talk about different options, different reactions, and try to provide different perspectives. But for the time being, I want you guys to practice this in conjunction with a more uh, regular back step where from here you feel like this might be difficult, our opponent's doing a good job. From here we can start looking to use our front step to get to an angle. And from here just trying to keep his legs out of the way. Same thing that we talked about before. We don't want to grab his legs and hold them in place because it becomes easy to kick out. We're just loosely following his feet. So now when he looks to pummel, it's easier for me to follow. And from here, we can start looking to close distance. Any questions? All right, sweet. One, two, three. Like even if my knee is slightly facing outwards, this is more conducive to the turn, right? So like you, because like usually this knee keeping close might open up my knee, but this will just make it like fairly easy for me to continue and make this transition here. So usually I'll be on my toes just so it's like a smaller surface area, right? Like when I'm here, because if I'm just stay my foot flat, it's like going to drag along. So it'll be a lot of times you on my toes. And I want to control this. Because if I just stay here, you throw in a matrix, this will be problematic for me. So I often go to both feet and then pull on elbows. Right, she tries to really pull your hips up. It's difficult because there's nothing here, right? So I'm also not just letting her step, right? Because if I step here and then she steps, now she can use this to off balance more. I'm keeping this foot in play where it's like, I'm, she's not able to kick out, but she's not able to step on the mat either. So now when she does the same thing, right? It's a little bit more difficult and then we'll be able to eventually time it. Because she's not able to stay there for long periods of times and it won't be like uh, effective off balance. We're gonna try and show some contrast here. You see a lot of the uh, 
passes and strategies Joseph will use today will be clearing feet. I'm gonna try to attach myself to his upper body, right? A lot of the time, if Joseph's attacking me from here, whether he's thinking wrestle ups or leg entries, he's gonna try to create some distance with his feet and get my hands to the floor in any sense. So I try to crowd his legs here and look to lift this far shoulder off the floor. If my knee points to my left, he's got quite a good platform to push off here. So I try to turn both knees out, but first I'm gonna take a post and turn my knees out. Now when Joseph pushes on me here, you can push really hard. It's difficult and I can start to collect this armpit. So again, he's got good, uh, good posture here, he's pushing into me. I turn my knees the same direction as his. I'm lifting his shoulder off the floor. And now if Joseph's trying to off balance me, take frames here in any way, I've got his knees pointed away from me and his left foot can't push into my hips to off balance. And I can start to look to squash his legs together here. So yeah, and we landed in this position. I've taken a post. The further I get my hip this direction, the harder it is for Joseph to push on that hip. And the more I can turn this knee out, the harder it's gonna be for him to push on this hip. So we're taking a post. I'm turning my knees and looking to lift this armpit off the ground. Now when Joseph's trying to push me, I'm attached to his upper body, so it's difficult for him to create any space here. And we can hop and start to squash his legs here. If Joseph stays here and I hop out, if he stays there, basically trying to guide both legs down into a smash position. But any form of grip I have on his armpit here keeps my upper body close to his and it makes it hard, even if he does have good pressure to the push him, it's hard for him to push, it's hard for him to even clear this grip here. And I can start to turn my knees out. He keeps trying to keep good control here and we can start to squash from this position. So again, trying to bring both knees together. So the more I can lift this off the ground, it's actually much easier for me to place my knee on the floor. If he keeps that on the ground and I'm using the head, he can keep distance here. But as I lift, I can really get my knee towards the ground. All right, guys, yep. I mean, wherever I can collect balance, because he's immediately going to try to off balance me. So I'm taking a post wherever it feels comfortable and then looking to turn my knees in. All right, guys, three, two, one. Here, go attack me. Fucking spaz my life. I'm just going to keep this here. You're not getting up from here. This is what I use the butt jump. I'm staying heavy. Kind of like, I don't rush forward too fast. And I keep all my weight here. And then the good thing is we immediately can get top of body goes. Okay, so now we'll go over a continuation of the first half. So for the initial part of this class, we're mostly talking about how we're looking to address their entanglement, and then we'll be covering how we can actually look to finish a pass. So from the situation we covered earlier, we talked about stripping this foot off of the hip. But something that may happen, especially like initially if they're pretty sharp from here, this grip isn't necessarily conducive to stopping him from retracting his heel to butt and then pummeling his foot to the inside. So it's very possible that from here, when I look to disentangle this single leg X, they pummel their foot to the inside. And from here, this provides like a very legitimate threat for off balance and like subsequent like submission based attacks. We'll cover like him looking to submit via like ankle lock or Aoki a bit later. But first, we want to think about how we can start looking to disentangle here. So from here, we're going to do a very similar movement to what we were doing earlier in regards to using a front step. But now we're going to use a different configuration since his legs have now changed. So I like to start looking to take an inverted thumb post at the outside of my partner's shin. And this is usually when, especially when we first enter the position, right? We make the transition off of the uh, single leg X, we enter, and I'm gonna look to make my palm face away from my body and grab this shin. This is gonna give me a good ability to start looking to force his heel to his butt, and so now when he looks to make meaningful connection with his butterfly hook, it becomes fairly difficult. 
And from here, the same thing we talked about earlier in terms of using a front step and back step in conjunction. Depending on our opponent's resistance, we can start looking to go into one or the other. If I feel like he's playing fairly loose with this leg, it's going to be more easy for me to start looking to back step and start flanking my partner. However, there are situations where they might be a little bit more sticky here, might be playing closer to my hip. Now, I'm going to start looking to move in the direction of front stepping. And I can oftentimes go with my opponent's like, body. When they start looking off balance and kick me this way, I'm once again monitoring their hand. And as they look to do this off balance, I can start looking to pivot and get back to this position. We'll talk about how we finish more in depth a little bit later from here. But we want to understand the context that we're doing this in first and how we want to look to address this. So we're in single leg X and we start looking to strip this off of my hip. And from here, I don't, I don't really have a good ability to stop him from bringing heel to butt, right? So this may happen and he's going to start looking to pummel in a butterfly hook. I prefer an inverted grip as opposed to this because I feel like I have a better ability to one, not only just strip this foot off from a butterfly hook, but I also have a good ability to almost flare his foot out. As opposed to if I went in initially, I feel like my thumb on the inside isn't sufficient to actually flare his foot out. So I feel like it's very important to start looking to use this inverted grip to push his foot. And from here, based on how he's resisting, if he's sticky, I'm going to front step. If he's less sticky, I'm going to start looking to back step and play from here. From here, this is fairly conducive to me start looking to go into various forms of camping and so on and so on. Does that make sense? So I want you guys to practice this in the context of the single leg X. So don't just start in a butterfly Aji, but kind of understand how this may happen where we are in the single leg X, he strips, but then he pummels us back in. I switch to an inverted grip, and then we play from here. Understanding that what we're going to do is based off of our opponent's reaction on whether they are letting us back step or not, where we can start looking to front step and play from here. Any questions? OK, sweet. One, two, three. I'm going to crab ride the shit out of you. Left hand, and now step back, and shelf the foot, shelf the foot. And try to get this foot here, and now grab the head, and, and stay, stay, stay this side low. Low butt, low butt. Yeah. You know Earthworm Jim? Remember that? Google it, and then have a look at that guy. He actually played the voice of the character. You want to do a Q&A afterwards? For sure, yeah. Easy. We should say only DDS questions. <laughs> only China-Taiwan relation questions. <laughs> Fuck that. People ask me how you got a German passport, and I said you got a little German in you. But they took it as meaning a gay thing. Right? Yeah, that's, I, that's why. I, I, <laughs> Wait, he gets a German passport not because of his heritage, but because of his uh, beliefs in the Nazi party. Yeah. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I'm very Aryan. Yeah. You got all the passports of the dictatorships. Historical and today. <laughs> Definitely. All right, guys, we'll do another option from here as well from the Butterfly Ashi. Again, I keep trying to attach myself to his upper body because Joseph, obviously, from here is trying to extend me out trying to elevate this leg to get a foot lock, right? So I'm so worried about him creating distance from here that I'm really scooping this shoulder out because now as he tries to extend me, I can pull myself back in. But obviously, I'm still not addressing his leg position here. So this time when I'm attach, attaching myself to this armpit here, I'm trying to use my left knee to clear. So I'm trying to use my left knee to push his right knee into his foot to start actively clearing this. So when I'm in the position, I'm taking a post, lifting his armpit off the ground. Obviously, it's not going to be this exaggerated. Joseph's going to be resisting this. But either way, it allows me to pull myself closer to him. So when he tries to extend me out, he tries to start setting up his footlock from here. It keeps me very close. And it's a difficult grip to break here. I start to use my left knee into his hip here. So I'm pinching my knees together here. Joseph still trying to extend me out, even if he's trying to use his other hand to create frames. And I start to turn my knees the same direction here. Obviously, in a perfect world, we could slide them out, but either way, it's gonna fatigue his grips from this position. So I'm lifting the shoulder as best I can, pinching my knees together. He's trying to extend me here. Every time he pushes me away, I pull my head towards my hand. So he starts creating distance 
And then I use my left knee to start pushing that off. And because we've got such good attachment here, Joseph's trying to recover, we got a good chance to go straight to mount. All right, guys, three, two, one. Next time, we're gonna slap your balls. Bro, what is this bullshit? You weak ass bitch. Fucking weakling. <laughs> Why do I feel so disrespected? By me? Every day. You're the co high. Co high. Okay, so now we went over like dealing with the position. Now we'll briefly go over how we're gonna look to address a situation where they're really moving towards a submission. So, a lot of the times when people are gonna be looking to attack either a straight Achilles lock or an Aoki lock, they're gonna look to find ways to unweight my foot. So, whether it be via hooking my far knee or st stomping on it, right? So these are both ways that people are gonna look to unweight the foot and start looking to adjust the grip. So, whether it be a normal uh, ankle, be, be careful. <laughs> Whether it be a normal ankle lock or an Aoki lock, we want to understand what they're looking to do. So I find that the Aoki will be a little bit more threatening. So understanding his goals and how we are going to look to like manage this. When he looks to go in the direction of the Aoki, first disregarding stance, what he wants to create is a situation where my heel is on his rib. So by virtue of that, he's going to be flaring my knee out so that he can enable this situation. So what I want to do as a result is I want to be pointing my knee in so he's no longer able to get this angle to force the Aoki. Something fairly unique about this uh, situation where he puts his, my heel on his rib is that I'm no longer able to put the boot on. So classically when people ankle lock you, when the heel is not on the rib, you can start looking to flex your toes back. So now you put the boot on. So now when he looks to go for a finish, it's fairly difficult. But by putting my heel on his rib, he creates a situation where I'm no longer able to do this. So this is a lot of the risk and a lot of the the reason why a lot of people like to use this style of grip. Even if it's not gonna be Aoki pressure, they're gonna use this Aoki grip to get an ankle lock finish. So this is fairly threatening. So the way we wanna to look to address this is by turning our knee in. So when we're doing this, we're being cognizant of this. So in this situation, whether it be, generally it's gonna be from a butterfly ashi, they're gonna to look to widen my stance to get weight off of this foot to now make this adjustment. So the way we're gonna to look to deal with this, we're gonna be turning our knee down and we're gonna be looking to figure out a way to clear this foot either off of my thigh or off of the behind, back of my knee. So I'll, we'll first start where they extend the back of my knee. In this situation, I'm gonna grab the foot that's behind and I'm gonna start looking to pull it up. So I don't necessarily need to do it this far. I'm exaggerating just so you guys see what I'm doing. When they look to extend me away, they're opening my legs so that now that my stance is wider, it's easier for them to take weight off of a foot. So, I'm gonna try to compromise his ability to widen my stance by grabbing his Achilles and pulling it up to the ceiling. So now when he looks to widen my stance from here, it's fairly difficult. From here, you're gonna have to take a little bit of balance, right? It's not gonna be the easiest job from here, but if he does try to off balance me, we can start looking to return to things we were doing earlier. From here, this is one of two things that are very important when looking to deal with the submission threat. One, he can't widen my stance, so I can put weight on this foot, but I'll, I can also flatten his hips. So when my opponent looks to go for this ankle lock, they want to get on one hip. This is going to make it very difficult for me to start looking to boot, put the boot on or drive my knee through. So by grabbing his foot, so start with the hook, I can pull his foot up, drive weight in, and from here, once again, we're still monitoring this, whether it be with an inverted grip or grabbing his foot. So now, when he looks to widen my stance, he can't, and when he looks to get on one hip, he's, it's also very difficult. And from here, we can start looking to go into options we discussed previously, whether it be in the direction of front stepping or back stepping. In a situation just now, we covered them hooking the back of our knee, but sometimes they might instead opt to step on the foot, so uh, step on the thigh, because oftentimes this can be more robust in its ability to actually open my stance, as opposed to him just hooking, he steps. In this situation, as he looks to go for this, we're gonna do the same thing I'm wary not to pull when I'm driving in, but I'm gonna look to momentarily create a situation where there's less tension in this foot. If I just drive weight into this foot, there's friction between his foot and my uh, thigh. So now when I look to pull, it's difficult. So I'm just gonna take weight off briefly so there's no tension and it becomes easy for me to pull this up. And from here, once again, I can start looking to drive his hips flat and now he's no longer able to compromise my stance. 
And from here, we can go into similar things where we start looking to pull his foot and start looking to cut an angle from here and defend the ankle lock. So the two main things we want to focus on is one, my own stance, as well as his, the orientation of his, his hips. So as long as we're made, able to manage these two things, it's going to be very hard for him to start looking to finish an ankle lock on us. So just focusing on stance, focusing on their hips, as well as the orientation of our knee when they unweight our foot. Okay? Sweet. One, two, three. Weak little bitch. <laughs> Well, this is unfortunate. I want him to like do like a little like this is our gym so that we have an introduction to our next few videos. Okay. Welcome yeah, to yeah. Singapore Submission Grappling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you just do that? Can you do that? Quite creepy, isn't yeah, it? Quite is, creepy. Right. Is, is that really what you wanted? I think I wanted it with a bit of the David humor. So for example, like you would start off by nesting it in a joke. Like for example, like it should be called, they say we have space constraints because look at all these people on our mat. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. I've never made a joke about the housing development board in no, no, my no, life. I'm saying, like, that's the housing development board is a national treasure to Singapore. Yeah. She wants to make fun of our public housing now. What's the homeless situation like in Austin? Where Singapore you live? is like a third world country. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Sure. exactly. You can't even get fucking dumb here. Yeah. yeah. Be fine, don't say that. Where would people go if there's no HDB? The streets. Yeah. The streets. Or Singapore Submission Grappling, conveniently located at Fusionopolis. No, no. We don't want you homeless pay. people here. We don't want homeless. You pay to yeah. come here. All right, guys. We'll show one quick move, and then we'll do some Q and A. I'll show this. I want to get get you to drill it. I actually developed this with Joseph. If you, <laughs> if every time, like when Joseph wants to attack his Aoki style footlock here, he has to gently place my heel on top, Brad. And obviously that's where he gets the finish. But if we come back a step. If I just shake my leg every time Joseph tries to place it in position, go for it, go for it. <laughs> he can't actually place the heel because I'm moving with him as he tries to, I'm like giving him too much, too little. But we're not going to drill it. I want you guys to find out either tomorrow in competition <laughs> or when you roll later today. But guys, we'll do Q&A now. I don't know, what do I do to you? Cradle me. <laughs> yeah, actually I do get a cradle on him, eh? I feel like this is not strategy, this is some bullshit. But... <laughs> so, whichever side of the leg I want to trap, I'm extending and catching his head in the same side. So as he comes in, I'm extending and dragging his head to his ear. Basically his ear to his knee here. And now Joseph's absolutely <laughs> fucked. <laughs> so if Joseph ke keeps continuing to f uh, pressure the pass, now this is fucked. <laughs> it's easy to off balance. Or we could switch back. Joseph loves 10th planet moves being done to him. <laughs> but yeah, I try to cradle him every time. I find it actually difficult to do much else from that. So I'm extending the left as I push his head with my bicep. I'm this is just like me thinking of an idea, but because like you're playing from here and they're really trying to like, if they get it down already, it's more problematic, but when they're looking to move in this direction, if I can start looking to turn my knee this way, you're not really going to be able to um, go for like an actual break. And I can start looking to play in the direction of Delahivas and stuff. Sweet. So, you think to my right side? Yeah, so from here, the, the idea that I have in mind in this is like trying to maintain a finishing position. So like I can put on like finishing mechanics, but if I don't really c like limit his ability to move, it can be problematic because I can't hold a finishing position. So like one of the things that I find more frustrating from this is I go here and he goes to like a reverse north south and drives weight on me. So this what, what happens with this is now my hands are exposed and they can hand fight. So I don't want this to happen. So what I'm looking to do is trying to prevent it to some degree. So I'm here and I can manage to start looking to entangle our lower bodies like similar to almost as if you were like trying to darse or anaconda someone or you can just look to control their foot like from here when they start looking to move to expose my hands and so on it's very difficult and if we do end in a position where we're belly up I'm looking to continue to either start looking to roll this way and just get out of this position where my hands are no longer exposed because I think 
this is the issue with a lot of the stuff like because I'll grab my own elbow but if my hands are exposed it's not gonna work so I need to try and move my body in ways where he can't really do this anymore so like same thing where I'm looking to control a foot control their legs or even like get to almost like mountain positions so now when he looks to like hand fight and so on it's very difficult so that secondary hand you're switching to like hand fight. yeah I don't think it's always necessary to grab the elbow I think it's the best in terms of like actually finishing but it's relative to how he moves. Because if I just focus on grabbing the elbow and we're both belly up, he's gonna always be able to strip it. So then it's a matter of me moving myself in a position where he's not able to continue hand fighting and I'm able to finish. Not is true. Is <laughs> it is it real or? <laughs> Are you implying Boogie would tap to a submission that's not real? <laughs> <laughs> I've hit you with it before, right? Before that match. Before the match. I mean, it is kind of real. The point is, I'm just trying to get as much deep pressure as possible here. So rather than just being real shallow, when I catch it, I'm punching it. Tap. Yeah, I created the tension off of this punch. So I'm not grabbing it and then trying to bend the ankle. They come together. Tap. Just be careful. And I'm using my wrist over the other wrist to pull down to create the break. It just happens to be between the legs. But obviously you could do it anyway. There's a toehold. Toeholds usually suck because the second you go for it, he just rolls out. You know what I mean? So the beauty of it being between the legs, it was just more difficult for him to roll out. This actually a lot from like float passing. Right. Like if we're here, like obviously when he's seated, I, I can see how it's like appropriate to do so because especially if he's leading hard with his upper body, it would make sense to go for it. A lot of the times like I'll play with this and I'll try to make sure that they can't really heist up because like if they can get to a kneeling position and start looking for takedowns from here, it'll be problematic. So I'm really almost trying to engage in a headquarters where I'm trying to really flatten their hips and get them down here. And like from here, sometimes what'll happen is like, they'll try to off balance me. And from here, I used to like really like hitting like a forward roll, but not to the extent where my hips drop to the mat, just so that my shoulders are on the mat so I can actually start looking to clear his hooks. So even if he looks to keep knees to chest, I can start looking to clear the knee and get to a mountain position. It's almost like the semi front ball. I used to do this a lot, but I mean, I think it'll work. Like, I'm, I think it's a good technique to go for it. As long as they can't really, like, Craig will put him in a, himself in a guillotine and wrestle up on me. Yeah, I try to really flatten their hips. So, like, whichever side they're actually looking to use to elevate me, right? So, in this case, like, if it's his right hook, I'm going to really be falling to this side. So, now when he looks to sweep me, it's weaker as if I were, if I was here, he's actually going to be able to get some movement going. So I prefer really flattening them out first. And then when I feel like there's no momentum they can capitalize on, then I can start looking to play like this. Does that make sense? Right. So the thing that's stopping him from sweeping you using the hook is you're flattening their hips. Flattening. Yeah. Does that make sense? Reset. So the first one was if you go for it and they look into you. Okay. I'll try to switch sides. <laughs> so if I'm here and he catch it, I catch his chin looking in. I'll take weight off for a sec. Now your right hand, what's your right hand doing? I mean here I just want to maintain an angle, so whether I'm framing here, okay. here. Okay. So I walk down and across. Okay. Down and, and across. If he looks into now you swap, so you obviously use your right hand. Here, I mean he won't look in here. I'm trying to make him look away from me. Yeah. Now when he tries to turn in, yeah. tough. If I'm too square with him, he might slip his chin in. Yeah, but over-exaggerate them looking away from you. Then last question on that, for some reason you really can't get it, where do you transition from there? Usually if I can't get it, this is, I'm proven to be an effective frame. Uh -huh. So I hit like a karate chop pressure. <laughs> and it's easy to come into a kimura, but it puts a lot of weight on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't reach. You wait for, I've, I mean, basically waiting for them to commit to the... I guide their weight past me, and I try to bring my hips in a little bit too. As I guide his weight past, he's going to obviously bring his weight back to try to get up. And that's what allows us to climb. I'm making him carry my weight 
if I can beat this knee right, this is where it gets really effective. Yeah, because now Joseph can't step back. And the more I walk in, the more he off balances. But depends how quick he moves with that. But I want to close, like, sorry, I want to close this distance here. See how there's all this space here? I want to bring my hips in as I throw this arm in. So now Joseph tries to counter here. It's very tough. We're like blocking the uh, near side armpit, far side hip. Joseph loves this. <laughs> They can't really cross face right because now he tries to cross face. I'm keeping my arm extended. If it was, if I reach for his hip, he gets a good cross face. But if I keep it high, now his cross face is going to be weak. I'm mostly getting it out of sprawl positions here, where as I feed the arm, we can now circle really far across body. Uh, I mean, when we set it up here, it's possible to get, but it is harder for me to cut the angle. I really want to set it up where the shoulder will be down. So now I can circle my head across body. So it's really good when they're bridging into you and you slip it. So if you practice a lot of smash passes, like this, especially if Joseph Frank, Now it's sort of big. I'm placing my head on his head, it's hard to bring his arm back. <clears throat> and we're you using your left arm to pull your right arm through. Yeah, I'm pulling my arm as deep as deep as possible. But what's important is I'm circling around. And I collapse the near side hip and my chin is nice and high. So, if, yeah, we managed to hit a front step, whether it be from like a butterfly or however so, yeah. So I would approach it similarly to how I would approach uh, some degree of north-south passing. So anticipating some degree of framing, and, but first like making sure they can't pummel their legs in, right? Because from here, if I were to neglect the legs and prioritize the pass, it's dangerous for me, right? So like I said before, like we, I try to pummel the elbow in and then take like a near side hip grip. So now when he really tries to pummel his feet and legs in, it's fairly difficult. And now I want to make the transition to the upper body. Generally, what people are going to do is they're going to look to establish frames, right? So something that I, now I have the freedom to do is bring this foot out and start looking to either play some form of north-south passing. And from here, it's a matter of clearing frames. So whether that be like uh, driving in with other parts of my body. So in this case, he's driving like framing on my right shoulder, right frame. I can start looking to drive into my left shoulder, or left hip. Or I can start looking to think of if his arms are weighted versus unweighted. If I'm driving weight into his frames, it's hard to clear. But the moment I can start looking to take weight off, it becomes much easier for me to turn these frames into levers. Right? There are a couple ways that I also like to do this. So like, if I'm rushing like from here and they like, uh, keep the arm, like keep the over wrap, right? Sometimes from here, they'll be framing on the shoulder, but only with one hand. I'll cut this elbow in, and then I'll be like transitioned to like a top side crucifix and really try to use this to get the pin. And I find that this is fairly conducive to attacks at the upper body, because now I've been able to, to some degree, isolate both arms. That makes sense? So, um, so in terms of like a recap, right? Making sure his legs don't come into place, and then dealing with the upper body in terms of when they frame. If they frame on you with both hands, the ankle is out of play, like, is free to move, right? My ankle is not going to be trapped there anymore. So you have a lot of freedom with how you can start looking to approach movement from here and then dealing with frames either in terms of finding where they're not framing on you and then driving in there, or looking to deal with frames by interpreting the weight on the frames. And then lastly, like if we feel like, okay, he's keeping a good hold of my ankle, I usually cut my elbow in and go to a top crucifix. So don't frame. <laughs> don't frame. If they don't frame, it's difficult. But this is what Craig does, but broadly speaking, that's how I would approach that. I'd probably say some degree of front headlock. Like if you can get a front headlock and play from there, it'd probably be easier because like foot sweeps are low risk, but like the, the skill curve to, ab to be able to hit a foot sweep reliably is fairly high versus front headlocks are more available and 
I don't. I wouldn't say it requires a large degree of explosiveness, and then playing from there, because you already you've established like a significant advantage. So then you're able, if you're able to work from there, it becomes a lot easier, as opposed to like working from open from a more neutral situation. Yeah. That makes sense. What, what would you think? I would just say focus on hand fighting. If you got good hand fighting and a bad shot, that's going to be more effective than a good shot and bad hand fighting. Like your setups. Focus on the setups.